Hello and welcome back. As you know, if you watch this program with any frequency, I love to support those who help others and doing so on this program is a way that I am able to participate in many different groups. This evening, we're going to have a conversation with a fellow who's been here a number of times over the years. We're kind of old buddies by now. He does fantastic work on behalf of patients and their families all across the Utah Valley, and it's always a wonderful thing to bring him back to this program. The Can Survive fundraiser is coming up on the 2nd of November. The organization is called Needs Beyond Medicine, and its founder and head is with me now. This is Philip Brown. Hi, buddy. Hello. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? Good. Welcome oh, back. Thanks for having me. We're kind of old good. pals by now. Yeah. It's been, is it three, four years? Is it four Probably years? at least four years. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. How are you? Good. You look great. Well, thanks. Just you know, I'm, I'm a little casual tonight, you guys. <laughs> I apologize for that, but I knew. <laughs> that this guy was going to come dressed to the eights and the nines, maybe even the tens. I have to do what I have to do sometimes. That's so. right. Well, you certainly, you looked the part, and I don't say that in a, in, a, in a silly way, but the work that you do and the, and the kind of tasks that you have to perform as the head of a charitable organization, we want a guy that looks like yeah. this, not like this. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I try. I do my best. So. <laughs> so let's do this. For folks who may not have heard of Needs Beyond Medicine before, uh, tell folks about, about the work that you do and, and, and give a little bit of background on how you came to, to feel so passionately to make this your life's work. Yeah, so we started it in, I started it in 2006. Six, wow. So, so you're it's over a little over 11 years, years old That's now. So. That is so cool, man. High five that. Thanks. Well, right, the, the, the business of philanthropy, the business of service to others can be really difficult. Right. There's a lot of people out there asking for money for all kinds of causes that are worthy. Right. And so we help cancer patients with non-medical expenses while they're in treatment. So rent, groceries, transportation, anything non-medical we is helped. A lot of cat. I mean, you, you cite the big ones, but it kind of goes on and on when you start looking at your monthly budget after you've been dealt a diagnosis or right or that sort of thing. So yeah, it's huge. So we are lucky enough to work with all of the hospitals and clinics throughout the state. So we do cover the entire state of Utah, and we put this fundraiser together. This is our ninth year doing. It's called Can Survive, and it's a photo gallery stroll of cancer survivors. Some we've helped financially and then others have just volunteered to have their photo taken and then next to each of their photos is their story and their type of cancer they're diagnosed. It's fantastic with, stuff. So. And of course we hung out last year. I was right. fortunate enough to, to get to be a part of the silent auction and the and the uh, the big auction and in the whole works. There's some really fantastic speakers and I think a nice combination of uh, poignant moments but also a nice light-hearted kind right. of atmosphere for the party yeah and so we'll have speakers this year again some of the survivors we photographed and then uh, silent auction items as well and raffle items so it'll be a great night we'll have a cash bar there as well and thanks to our sponsors the Falls Event Center which is hosting again nice the venue again this year and also the Sorensen Legacy Foundation which is our main big sponsor so good stuff what's different about can survive and, and what you're doing nowadays than a year or, or or maybe compare where you're at now to five or ten years ago when you first started the organization what's the what's the journey been like for you and and, and also talk a little bit about your goals in the long run well, I think it's ups and downs obviously but with can survive Fortunately enough for us, it's always been increasing every year, and people that attend constantly say, hey, you need to do this again next year. So we look at different avenues. I know with, in the last couple of years, we started having the speakers speak because people were wanting to hear, hey, they want to be more personable of, hey, this is what I went through. This organization was able to help with these bills. Uh, so I think that's the biggest draw and it's more a night dedicated to all the survivors because they were 
have been in such a journey and are still surviving and being helpful. But I think the long haul, it's just increasing, obviously, our support and also just the income that we are able to receive from the event to help the organization sure. throughout and the year. I assume you're probably fundraising throughout the year. Right. So this is the big this is the big night when you try to put a, a really nice chunky number in there to the coffers, but I imagine that, that that's something that you're kind of always thinking about and always working on. Yeah, and I think it's also just a great way to thank our partners too that we have throughout the community because we do showcase them throughout the night um, <clears throat> and we also just thank them publicly. I know some of them are here's our support and this is how we're helping you guys and we don't need any acclimates from that aspect but we're able to say hey thank you for this and to all the people in the room thank you for supporting us and contributing uh, and I think especially this year I know this is the first year we're actually going to have it's a uh, it's actually just up in Heber City it's called Miss Calls Candies so they are partnered with us and are going to donate some gift baskets and then also all the uh, guests will have access to their great caramels that they do so I'm a caramel guy yeah, so and they're amazing easy so. sell here for <laughs> sure <laughs> but otherwise the format is pretty much the same this year as, as what we did last year yeah so we'll have the auction items and raffle items we have different auction items uh, this year than previous years but and we have the unique stuff. You spoke about ups and downs, and of course any organization, whether it's a charitable organization or a for-profit business, right. <laughs> has those ups and downs. Do you see fundamental factors in, I don't want to say the economy, but, but sort of in here in Utah that will allow you to, to jump to a level that is, is far beyond what you are now, or is it more of a kind of an incremental thing as far as serving? I'm sure that you must feel like, gee, I wish we could right. serve 10 times as many people. Yeah, I think it's a mixture of everything. It's obviously the economy downfall was a huge hit. And then I hit think, all charitable and I think it's also part. just, there's so many, like you mentioned, there's so many charities out there vying for for people's hey, can available you, yeah, dollars. Can you donate or? Sure. And I think with what sets us apart is we're actually helping the people in Utah with things that are non-medical related. Because hospitals will do charitable situations where they're helping with treatments or surgery where they can apply for assistance through the actual hospital for medical related. And then where we step in is totally just on the other thought of well, what do I do now since I'm not since I'm unemployed now or I had to cut back my hours I'm not able to afford those essential living needs that I have ever, that I have to deal with every day and don't go away yeah. they don't go away that's heavy must be a an incredibly satisfying kind of work to do to be able to see the gratitude that people have when they receive assistance from needs beyond medicine yeah I love it so <laughs> still going I have a good conscience so <laughs> yeah right <laughs> I can sleep and it's great and it's it's an eye-opener too because it's like you think about your worst days but then that next day the phone call comes in and says hey I'm going through this and this and this and I'm having surgery and then I have 10 weeks of radiation or chemo and then it's all put back into perspective of, oh wait, nothing's no question. that bad off. <laughs> and you know, it's an interesting thing that you say that because I'm reflecting on uh, a friend in Los Angeles who was diagnosed with a, a tumor early in the summer and had to do the, the chemo and the radiation prior to surgery just so that they could do uh, uh, perform a, a safe surgical procedure to, to remove the cancerous tumor. but. It occurred to me as I was following along and my pal Justin did tons of videos 
uh, highs and lows too. I mean, there were he, he did a few videos where the you know the sort of the subject matter was the you know the physical toll and you know the worry and all of those kinds of things. And it occurs to me that, that for me and I'm sure for a lot of other people that nowadays with social media we're better able to understand what that journey is like. Even if in, in my case, like I say, Justin's probably the first person that I've that. I've, that I know personally who's gone through it, who has shared, and like I say, he's in LA, but the videos and that kind of thing, and I, I found myself tuning in right. almost like an episodic show, and I, and I say that in a beautiful way because he shared so much. Is there, is, is there a time for you when you get overwhelmed with the emotional side of the work? Because you, in essence, you're going, you're a, you're a, a health care provider or a right. care provider in a way. I think it just, yeah, it, it hits you hard. You know, I don't, unfortunately, I don't know most of the people we help on a personal level. Right. You know, sure. like I can say, oh, they're a friend, or uh, I think it's just the biggest thing with me is I always say, oh, well, I won't hear about this. And then a couple of days later, I get a phone call saying, hey, this is what I'm going through. And I'm thinking, man, it's just can't get worse you know or some yeah. people even once we award them they sit and want to talk and want to talk to you for a half hour to an hour of just saying hey this is what I'm going through and thank you so much yeah, and it's interesting so you get those opportunities yeah. too to be personal with the folks that you're helping yeah just to even get to know them a little bit is helpful of seeing their insight especially the ones that are want to talk to you and say hey you know I've been Going through chemo the last five weeks, four days or four times a week. Oh. I'm just laying in bed, and this is what's going on. And they just sit and talk to you, and almost want just another ear to say. And I think the biggest thing too is because obviously it comes with the territory of hey, we're in the cancer world, so it's not like oh, I don't understand what you're going through because I do understand in a sense what they're going through because sure. I hear hear it all the time from it's not some are very very bad and then others are more a little on the lighter side but sure sure well it's great to see you and as always thank you for the work that you do it's it's an interesting niche that you have of course a, a vitally important one but it's kind of one of those things that makes me happy that it's it's 2017 and this is the kind of world we live in where there are people like you who have realized right. that, as you say right in the title of the organization, beyond medicine there's just so much that has to be done just to get through that period. It's true, Great unfortunately. Stuff, so. All right, so Can Survive Friday, November 3. That's a week, a week from, from this tomorrow. Friday. Yep. And a big event, Falls Event Center. What time are you kicking off? Five o'clock. Oh, five, you're going early this year. Is that earlier this year? No, I think we did five. Did we? Wow. You just could come a little later since you were the <laughs> ah, I see. MC, so <laughs> five to, five to 9.30 and we'll have speakers starting around 7.30. Okay, good. So gotcha. it's just an open house. Awesome. So you can come whenever and we'll take your donations at the door. It's no cost, just donations only and come and have food and and see the photographs, the, the, the gallery aspect of it is really cool to read those stories. Yeah. And of course, some of those people you will see at the event so you can read and then say, oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And our photographer, Chad Hurst, will be there, of course, so he. Great, great. Uh, so final thing is fun. social media. Tell folks where they can find out more information, not just about the event, but about Needs Beyond Medicine. So yeah, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Needs Beyond Med. Needs Beyond Med. There you have handle, it. So. It's great to see you. Thank you, you for, for the work that you do, and, um, and thanks for being a friend to Park City Television. Thanks for having me. It's always fun to get away from Salt Lake for a little while and come up here. So. Well, you're always welcome, brother. Good to see Thank you. Thank you, Terry. All the best. Thank you. Philip Brown, Needs Beyond Medicine, next Friday is their big fundraiser, Can Survive at Needs Beyond Med, all across social media. Find out more about this great organization. This guy has a huge heart, and he puts all of it into helping others. Isn't that a beautiful thing? We'll be right back after this. Please stay tuned.